Hey everyone and welcome back to another Warcraft video. Today we're going to be talking about patch 7.1. There are two main things on the agenda. First, we need to preview the six, kind of seven, new mounts that we're going to be getting with this patch. And then we need to talk about ten features which are a little bit lesser known because they've only really appeared out of the data mining and they weren't parts of Blizzard's core PR push when they were talking about patch 7.1 pre-release of Legion. So let's get right into it with the new mounts and I'll be starting off with the Smoldering Emberworm. This actually drops from Nightbane in the old Karazhan and well it's that particular worm model but it's on fire as a mount. Which overall I don't really think that's uh, something we can complain about. Definitely looking quite cool. And that brings us on to the next mount in our list which is the Arcanist's Mana Saber. An absolutely beautiful Suramar themed mount. A bit similar to, say, the Rune Saber in some ways. It's got the nice little um, addition that it actually automatically puts your disguise on, which, uh, is, yeah, that's kind of handy. Now, this actually comes from Exalted with the Nightfallen, so it's nice to see a reputation reward be added there. We also have the Dark Water Skate. This is a sea mount, from what we can see, it comes from the Dark Moon Fair. That's definitely quite nice, and it's pretty cool they're adding more aquatic mounts with Legion. We also have Midnight's Eternal Reigns, an extremely cool looking skeletal horse, different from the old uh, sort of Midnight mount that you can get um, as a rare drop in the old Karazhan. This is one that comes from that boss in the new Karazhan, so new mount, uh, new boss, new dungeon I suppose, overall looking very good. And then we have two mounts which come from a new faction which I'll talk about in a bit called Talon's Vengeance. These are the Rock Spine Basilisk and the Ivory Hawkstrider. They are a bit more simple in that they're pretty much just animals that you ride around the place, but that's a look that could work for some people. I definitely like the look of the Hawkstrider and the Basilisk. Well, hey, if you really want to ride a Basilisk around, then you can do that now, so hurrah. We do have potentially a seventh mount. So this does tie into something I'll be talking about later on in the video, but basically it's a raptor falcon kind of thing. I suppose it's maybe a bit closer to an actual raptor and that it's feathered. That said, it's still mount size, not the size of a chicken. So yeah, not really a scientifically accurate raptor, but hey, who gives a shit about that? Basically, it's a furry raptor mount that you probably will be able to get. A um, little bit up in the air as far as the data mining goes, but overall, that's up to seven mounts you'll be able to get with patch 7.1, all of which I think, uh, you know, definitely have some sort of strong appeal. Next, let's talk about the features that are going to be a little bit lesser known to players because they hadn't really been talked about by Blizzard until this PTR update. So, first of all, we've got to talk about the Falcosaur. That's the mount that I talked about earlier. There is a Broken Isles wide event thing where basically these Falcosaur mobs are sort of their invasive species. I believe there's some world event stuff tied to it and they can drop stuff which will lead to a pet and a rare mount according to the patch notes. That's really nice to see and it's pretty cool we're just getting some, you know, some world content for the Broken Isles that's just not really related to the core bits of the expansion. It's nice to have additional content like that. And speaking of additional content, we also have Alcaz Isle. There is some new sort of world quest-ish content going on on Alcaz Isle, which is outside Duskwallow Marsh. So this, I suppose, is the first time that they're really going back to um, one of the older zones in a patch like this and adding in some, uh, you know, some new content. Yeah, they've done stuff like that before, but uh, you, you get what I mean. After the world quest system, they've talked about doing this kind of thing a lot. So hopefully that is a, a sign of pretty good things to, uh, to come in the future. We also have the new reputation. We don't exactly know how you get rep with these guys, but essentially, you know where Aviana is in High Mountain? That's now a reputation hub, so there will likely be some stuff going on there. We currently know that two of those rewards are the new mounts. They currently do also sell a item level 820 trinket and then just some little, like, utility items, so perhaps that's something that will be beefed out as time goes on, but certainly cool to see a new reputation be added into the game. We also have a trader for Bloods of Sargaris, so you'll now be able to flip your Bloods into other crafting materials. That would, that, that'll be quite handy. It will also have a homogenizing effect on the market, though, because you have, you know, the Blood of Sargaris pretty much being an entryway to most of the, um, you know, of the different crafting materials that are there. So who knows what effect that will have on the economy 
or whether that will be a good thing or not, because technically it does give every player more economic power and takes a little bit away from the niche of every um, profession, because now the thing that that profession does is no longer uh, as mutually exclusive as it used to be. Patch 7.1 also brings a slight revamp as far as leveling goes. So essentially the level one through 10 abilities are being tweaked and changed so that they make a little bit more sense. One example is that rogues will start leveling with a new ability that is uh, one weapon, generates one combo point. Then if you choose assassination, that will be replaced with them um, mutilate at level 40. So I think they're trying to get more of a sort of power curve going there because right now you start off with your super powerful ability and you can just shred through absolutely everything. And I imagine that's a bit of a nightmare to balance well. So we will hopefully be seeing some nice little improvements with the leveling process. On top of that, we also see some updates to the Nagrand Arena. That's definitely something that's really welcome. I think PvP players have been somewhat underserved uh, with Legion. As much as some of the new systems are really cool, and I do like them, I think it really is a pity that there hasn't been new PvP content. This certainly is not that much content, though. Um, you know, it's just some sort of little revamps so that looks a bit nicer, but... Yeah, we, we definitely want to see more there. We want to see new battlegrounds, I think, at the very least, and hopefully that's something that'll come in patch 7.2. Anyway, we also now have the ability to upgrade our legendary items. So I was getting questions, people saying, well, mythic, uh, you know, some of the mythic gear is better than legendaries that we get now. That doesn't make much sense. Well, you'll be able to get a item called the Essence of Amonthul, Currently, I think it's 50 of those will turn into um, one item which you can then use to upgrade your legendary to item level 925. Who knows what effect that'll have in the overall gearing, but I suppose it does make sense that these legendaries are the best thing overall. And it's interesting that uh, it will take some upgrading to make them that good, which I think is sensible because the people doing the harder content do get more of a reward there. We also have a change to the honor system coming. So essentially, the way the prestige system works with honor is you hit level 50, you've unlocked all of your talents, then you prestige, and then you lose all of that talent progress. They're changing that so that you do not lose your talent progress anymore. I think that makes good sense. Maybe it makes a bit more sense, say, in Call of Duty to lose all your unlocks, but in a game like World of Warcraft, I don't think that really works as well for the PvP system. Um, I think it's a good change overall, so I'm pretty happy about that. And what it should mean is that once you hit level 50, uh, you'll be able to sort of keep on grinding through the prestige system, getting new rewards, getting artifact power, gold, etc. And in all the places where you would have been unlocking a new honor talent, you will instead get gold or a similar reward. Next, for those of you who are interested in pet battles, we have a new sort of series of pet battle achievements and battle pets coming in with Wrath of the Lich King. So there's a new raiding with leashes. Uh, for Wrath content that'll get you new battle pets, new achievements. Not really my cup of tea, but it's great to see that there's some content going in there for the people who are interested in that. And then finally, the BlizzCon in-game items have been released. So with World of Warcraft, we are getting a Legionnaire Murky and a Knight Captain Murky. So basically a Horde and Alliance version um, of Murky as a battle pet. I'll cover the other games as well. So for Overwatch, we will be getting a new Bastion skin. For Diablo, there's a 20th anniversary Diablo pet, which looks quite similar to the original Diablo. For Hearthstone, there's a new card back. For Heroes of the Storm, you get a Nexus Tiger mount. And whatever they're giving out for StarCraft II is a mystery currently. Hopefully that is them, you know, hinting that there'll be some uh, sort of interesting StarCraft II announcement at BlizzCon. I'd certainly like it to be that because StarCraft is one of my favorite Blizzard titles and it's a little bit sad to think that the StarCraft 2 trilogy is now over. But anyway, that's it for this video. Quick look at the mounts, a look at some features you might not know about patch 7.1. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think about all this content. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.